My name is Jello Wenz. I'm running ITS, as you know. Uh, most of the people who are currently on board here in this today's presentation uh, I know, and uh, they know me probably as well. And I'm happy to announce to you today some news that we have uh, actually brought you uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, we have advanced and advanced and advanced uh, with our line of products uh, that we have uh, been using for projects throughout um, Germany as well as other parts of uh, Europe and uh, the United States as well. And uh, therefore we wanted to uh, take the next step. And the next step for us is uh, to bring it all together in the it is easy suite. Uh, therefore we are happy to announce today that there's a suite of products which you can see now on the slide. Uh, they are consisting of four pillars. The four products are it is easy business, it is easy docs, it is easy email, and it is easy team. Uh, and there is of course glue around them uh, which are bringing them together which is a joint denominator for all of the products which is a unified user management and user interface which we call the this control center. Um, we are going to show you today about uh, those products. Not everything that is in the products is already in the presentation and will be in the presentation today. There's even more news. Uh, we invite you to uh, join our way. Uh, so it is not that we want to be sealed in and just keep it for ourselves and take it as an opportunity and advantage, but we see that as a possibility to find comrades, uh, to work with you together uh, in the various topics and scenarios. We are sometimes doing that already right now. As you know from our history, we have always been a partnering company, so we try to partner where we can, where it makes sense, uh, where there's really a win-win situation, and then uh, find uh, synergy effects and those kind of things. To the products, uh, it is easy business is actually derived from the Udu base, it's from the Udu community. Um, the Udu product is a great product and we found over the years that it's really a, a substantial solution to build a, a solution on top for, for the businesses. But then we found that there need to be a couple of enhancements. And uh, over a while we brought uh, the Udu Advanced uh, Enhanced Community version and uh, found that this is already making sense for a lot of customers. And then today I think we are taking the next step, uh, bringing it in, into our own brand, which is it is easy business, which is having all the ingredients and enhancements on board in one package and uh, makes really sense. We call that a distribution and it's like a Linux distribution for the various topics that are coming there. It's open source and it's having the ability for you and us to bring in great value for the companies that we are doing business with. That is actually then counterparted by a document management solution that is always a necessity in, inside projects. So whenever you're creating a business solution, there's always a need to produce documents to put them up into a safe place where they can be, be retrieved after a while, just presenting what the business process was about. And that is based on Alfresco. It is easy docs is then as well an enhancement as it is easy business towards Alfresco. And what we have done is that we have put up a lot of features and functionalities into the community version of Alfresco. Uh, with Alfresco, there's a really good sustained document management possibility. And it is easy docs is building on top of that. And it is easy business and docs, as you know, are bridging the gap that both systems are working really very closely together. We will see that a little bit in the demo as well and find out about what is happening there in between those two systems. And then there's, it is easy email. It is easy email is then the counterpart, which is really taking care of the whole messaging process as well as group work process. It is built to be a reliable, sustainable company-wide email solution and uh, this is going to be the, or it is the basically the product which is having the communication needs for you when it comes to email, when it comes to shared calendaring and team invites, when it comes to the ability to make a chat with each colleague uh, during those times, it's even more into interesting than before. 
And that's all brought up into this solution. And then last but not least, we are running today also on it is easy team. Uh, formerly it is Conf. Uh, we are using that product, which is based on Big Blue Button, as a solution for a joint conferencing system. We have actually looked into that conferencing topic for years. I think we have spent some eight to ten years now finding out about what the best screen sharing solution, presentation solution, collaboration solution is, and I think it is this product now. Uh, we are having fantastic results over the last month where we needed it the most throughout the, the whole pandemic. Uh, it is really more needful than ever to make sure that we have a great product that is running stable, that is fulfilling the needs, that is ability to share the screens and to make collaboration work. All of those four parts together are then embraced with an umbrella which we call the Edis Control Center. And the Edis Control Center gives you the ability to manage the user from one place. It is the ability to say, okay, this user has the ability to use it is easy business or docs or end docs and email, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then also derive within groups how the users are going to be using the software. And, uh, and that is then one common denominator. It's also web-based as all of the other products. And I think we can now skip to the next slide where I'm going to introduce the company a little bit to you. Uh, it is headquarters is nearby Munich, Germany. It's actually very close to the Munich airport. Uh, we have actually a couple of data centers now in Bavaria uh, where we are running those solutions that we're talking of today. Nowadays, we have 50, uh, 35 employees and this three locations actually, it's not just only in Germany, but all over the place. And then uh, there's 21 years of experience. I think uh, with that experience, we always have uh, kind of the do's and don'ts in mind uh, when it comes to IT projects, when it comes to the professional solutions that companies need. And that is also shown by the projects that we have done. It's more than 360 right now, actually, already uh, that we have derived over the years. And uh, we hope that there will be more to come. Next slide, please. All right. Um, yeah, well, today uh, we want to have a story with you because usually presentations are usually consisting of uh, various uh, kind of features and function presentations, but this is usually not what we need to see. Instead, we thought, okay, it might be better to have a real user story. And I'm happy that I have my colleague with me, who is then actually the one who is going to present you the use cases, the whole user story about what is uh, with the products and how they work together closely. And then there's the technology part, where we talk briefly, not very long, for uh, the technology which is underlying and underpinning those products and uh, how that can be used. And then we have it for the Q&A where everybody of you is invited to address your questions and uh, talk back. Uh, whatever you think is on your mind, you can also articulate your, your thoughts. You can also articulate when you have some doubts. Uh, we are happy to address all of that. And uh, that is uh, basically the agenda for today. So with that, uh, I want to turn it over to Al, who is going to be using now uh, his screens uh, to present the solutions to you. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. So let's jump into the story. Uh, so we prepared a short story for you to show uh, the live demo. And therefore we have uh, some employees and different companies created. So here, for example, we are using Mary Seller which is working in Great Trade Limited. And um, her topic is to set up a new office uh, location. And therefore she needs to order furniture as well as a network for the new location. And to give you a better overview about the different uh, persons, we uh, did this by using different color themes. So this one will appear in, in red color. Next is John Fittings. John is uh, working for Fresh Furnishings, and this is the supplier from Great Trade. So they are going to build and deliver the furnitures for the new office. 
and this one will appear in, in yellow, as you can see. And last but not least, there is Mike Consult from High Fiber. High Fiber is going to support with the network on the new location and is also supplier from Great Trade. The theme for this one is blue. And next, we're going to see a short overview about the whole story, what we're going to create here. So Great Trade is uh, the main uh, company here, and um, they will use the business requirement as well as the, the project to plan the internal project to set up this new location and uh, have the furnitures there, network, and so on. And from there, we are going to purchase the furnitures and this will be done for in with the company Fresh Furnishings, which we can see here. So Fresh Furnishings is going to use the MRP module, but in this case, um, we are also going to use the subcontracting module. And then we are going to deliver the goods to Great Trade in the new location. And with this scenario, we are also going to show the DMS uh, with ETIS Easy Docs, which is included there. Um, as well as um, uploading uh, scanned invoices from suppliers. In the next step, we are going to use the appointment module to uh, create an um, appointment for mounting the new furniture in the location. And after that, we are going to the high fiber company where we order the network. And there we are using the sales and um, supplier contracts module to have yeah, recurring services there um, built with, as well as the support module to report the network issue and of course take care of this uh, with the support module. And to the end of the demonstration, we are going to show you the attendance um, as well as some enhancements in the leave and uh, overtime functionality. So let's jump right into the first use case. Uh, we are going to start with uh, Mary. And first of all, she has to create this internal business requirement, set up the project with according tasks they need to take. And then we are going to manage some of those tasks and purchase the furniture there. Okay, so. Let me just shift the screen a little bit. Okay, so so basically it's like a real scenario where we are going to see those people who are working for the companies. Correct. We try to build it in a short story that it makes more sense. Of course, we cannot show all the features and all the functionalities. It's, it's really a small picture, but uh, hopefully it makes totally sense to you in the end. So let's start with creating the attendance for Mary. So she, she's starting to work real late this day, but however, so let's check in now and start the attendance there. Well, first we are creating the business requirement as we said, so let's create a new one. And the task is, as we mentioned to set up new office location. In the business requirement, we are going to select the customer. This will be great trade since it's an internal project. And we can also define this here, type of project, internal one. So the stakeholder is also great trade limited. We can assign categories like office here, for example. And we can also have a yeah, story created here that we know what we need to do. And there are also more additional options like defining scenarios, defining gap analysis, use cases, test scenarios. So this is real a possibility to structure and plan your full project. And there are also um, tasks available. So what we do next is, we plan some tasks we need to take to have everything working for us in the new location. So this so would be a great tool for a service company anyways. I mean, uh, 
if you have your internal as well as your customer projects planned with that, using the business requirement planning with it, you really get a project planning tool, right? Absolutely. So you can, uh, of course, this was not designed, designed for internal projects. It's really for customer projects as well. Uh, so you can define the tasks there. You can uh, do the estimation like we see here. And this will also sum up the hours. You can print your estimates, uh, which will also include the defined scenarios with the gaps. Uh, so this will also create a PDF file, which is having all the information included and which can be sent to the customer, of course. Okay. So let's so, add some more. Let's add some more tasks here. So, for example, review supplier and purchase for furniture. Then we can define a coding section and define the time we're going to use. But we are planning for this one. Once we purchase them, we need to also plan for the mounting in the new location. This is also part of the furniture section. This won't take very long for us to agree appointment. Once this is done, we need to take care about the network. So we're going to review the offerings of the network. And we also have to place the order for that. Like thing, yeah. Sorry, didn't get it. I said, it looks like a familiar thing. I've got a customer who just uh, moved and uh, they are taking the same steps. Well, and once the network is available, we also need to check if it's really working in the new location. And once everything is there, of course, we need to introduce the employees to the new location there. Let's save this. So we have a few tasks here. It's not that complicated, but uh, it's good for a demonstration, I think. As you can see, the estimated hours are summed up already. And since we have everything there, what we want to have, we can confirm the business requirement. By confirming the business requirement, the project is created accordingly, as you can see, and we can navigate to the tasks directly. So here are the tasks according to the uh, yeah, business requirement we just created. And for the demonstration, we already prepared another business requirement since we set it up some additional values there already to show dependencies to show timelines and that we're going to show you here so this is what we prepared you can see uh, different stages project uh, stages there and you can also see dependencies to other tasks as well as start and end dates what we also can see here on the timeline view is what um, yeah the t dependencies are we can see it on the coding timeline and you see what is required next and what's the status of the current tasks already so let's get back to the tasks and what we're going to do now is internal meetings so we want to keep everything or everyone included in the project up to date so therefore we are going to create activity here so let's say we are setting up a call to update everyone on the progress internally and yeah well let's do this on um, starting today and we are going to set up a, a call every week so let's create a recurring one and we will do this on thursdays and up till the end of the project. So let's say we want to have everything done till 6th of no November. So let's schedule. Well, and as you can see here, all recurring activities are created and with according details, 
when it will take place, who's assigned to that task, and so on. So that's a real easy way to plan and schedule your activities there. Hey, cool. So this is really on the fly, all the activities at once. Right. So next, um, according to the tasks, we want to plan uh, the purchase order or purchase the furnitures as well. So let's go to the contacts and change to the list view here, for example. Well, as you can see, there are not very much information in that list view. So what we can do here is uh, we can just add another column and show, for example, the company name in a separate one. As you know, normally there is a, a module or yeah, studio, for example, required an enterprise to customize views or also some programming. Here you can do it just on the fly. You can also drag and drop fields and you could also save global views as well as user-defined views here. So from here, we're going to our Fresh Furnishing Limited and there we prepared already a RFQ where we are going to purchase the required furniture. As you can see here, some drawers, some office chairs and desks, of course. And now let's go to confirm this to a PO. And as you can see, also the receipt is created. So what we do next, let's go back to our project, our tasks. And here we have supplier and purchase furniture, which is already in the state. And we can add some additional time here. Like for example, you create it. Another 30 minutes, save process 100. And we can also shift this to the site and go back to our tasks and have another look at the timeline. And as you can also see here, the progress is updated accordingly. Well, so that was the first use case. So let's take a short look at our presentation, what we want to do next. So here we have the use case one, which is already done now. And here we is, want to start with the use case two. That means we received the order from Great Trade. So for furnishing, it will be a sale order. We're going to perform the subcontracting. We deliver the materials then for the subcontractor. So we are also sending goods to the subcontractor. And once everything is available, we are going to deliver to Great Trade and then we can upload also the scanned supplier invoice. So let me wrap it up. Uh, basically, it's a subcontracting. No, it's a purchase on the one hand side, and it's a, then the deal is done. And now uh, John is going to be pres uh, preserving that deal and put it up into production internally. Right. So for, for this company, for the fresh furnishings, it's a sale order. So we're going to create a new sale order first for great trade. And now let's add some products. So you're setting up basically what has been put up on the purchase order on the one side and to the sales order on the other side. Can that be automated? Sure. Uh, currently we're working in different databases and different companies. So that's why we're doing this step manually at the moment. But we also have a connect tool to connect different instances and uh, systems or databases. And then we could also transfer those records automated as well as change the models. For example, when we create a purchase order on the one 
database, it could be a sale order for the other database or for the other company. So this could be fully automated as well. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, so we have the product here. So let's add one more for the mounting services. Okay, so this is what Great Trade wanted to have. And the drawer and the office chairs are products which will be uh, sent from us directly. And the corner desk black is the product we are going to subcontract. And therefore, there's an option available on the inventory of the product where you can select the subcontract route. So let's confirm this uh, to a sale order first. So here a delivery was created. We can take a short look there. As you can see, drawer office chair are available since we are, they are sent from our location. And currently we are waiting for the office desk. One more thing you may be recognized is there was a link created uh, to it is easy docs. So let's have a look at that. There's a document link. And this is showing the order report. So this one was uploaded automatically to the DMS by confirming the quotation to a sale order. This is also working for quotations for invoices for purchase orders. So there's no need to think about what you need to store. It's stored for you automatically in a full working document management system. So, so basically it's just really a document management system behind here. You see that also on the document actions, right? On the right hand side, you can see what you could do with the document, whether you are going to move it somewhere around, whether you are going to start a workflow manage permissions or that you also manage aspects which are critical to route the document throughout the document management system by tagging what kind of document it is. And this is just a part of the functionalities of that document management system, which is really a rich document management system or the have a solution bulletproof when it comes to any kind of audits and those kind of things. So this is uh, one, one thing which we find really useful to combine this business solution with document management solution. It is easy business to it is easy docs. So back on the sale order um, that is confirmed now, we also want to keep track of our subcontracting and therefore we're going to the purchase section here. So Oops, that's a lot of, a lot of new stuff in here. That's right. Um, so here we can see a contract overview. Um, since uh, the contracts module is installed, there's a new dashboard where you can see the contracts which are created with suppliers as well as purchase agreements. So you have different types of contracts you can manage with that. And we will take a look into this uh, when we come to the use case with High Fiber because we are going to create a supplier contract there as well. Okay, cool. So here uh, RFQ was created. Um, the vendor is ready met, so that's our subcontractor in this case. And as you can see here, we find this corner desk black product here, and we're going to confirm this order to purchase the required products from our subcontractor. Same here. Uh, Received is created, so let's take a short look there because as you can see here, the receipt is on waiting state. This is something which is customized because normally it's always uh, ready by default. But even if we check the availability, you see that it's not there yet because it needs to be produced first. Um, and therefore, uh, we set it up that we can have a manufacturing order for the subcontractor. Uh, we can see that here from the inventory. So here we have a subcontracting RMP. 
MRP for the according warehouse as well as from the manufacturing itself. So when we open that, we have all products included, which are uh, set on the BOM. And once we check the availability there, it will check for the products. So screws, bolts, and table legs are available in the warehouse of the subcontractor. You can manage that uh, as a normal warehouse, also using reordering rules. Um, in this case, the tabletop is something which is not available since we set it this up to be delivered from us to the subcontractor. So when we look at the inventory tab here, you can see another route called material. That means we are going to send the tabletops to the subcontractor and they are going to build the full desk using that material. Okay. Well, Go ahead. for that, let's, let's take a look to the inventory. There we have delivery orders and Let's take one action here. Okay, sorry, need to go back. Okay, delivery orders. Here it is. So here we have the delivery order for the tabletops sent to our supplier, uh, subcontractor. So let's validate this one. So I'm just validating all by once. And this is done now. So next step, we can go back to our subcontract and check the availability on the manufacturing order again. So as you can see now, products are available. So we can start the production. And to speed things up, let's mark this as done right away. So now the manufacturing from the subcontractor is done and we can check our inbound shipment again, which is still in waiting state. But now when we check the availability, the goods are there. So let's validate and receive the goods. And since we have everything in stock now, we can also take a look at the delivery order to great trade. So now everything is there and we can also send the furniture to our great trade company, which we did now. So let's go back to the sale order. All right. So of course. Right yeah, please. Basically, it is a process where we have got an order by a customer, uh, where we are then producing parts on our own, uh, where we are subcontracting other parts, the subcontractor, but we, at the same time, where we are going to give the order to the subcontractor, put some material aside, which the subcontractor can use for delivering his part. And then the subcontractor, when he's done with his uh, mounting of the desk in this case, uh, he's going to submit back to us and we can then mark up that we are going to be ready for delivery for the sale order that we've got from our customer. Right. Okay, so then let's create the invoice. Since we delivered everything to our clients, we can create the invoice for that. Okay. So here we have the invoice in draft state now. And of course we can validate this, that the invoice is created accordingly. Okay, so next we can do here is um, since we had a subcontracting and the goods are already received, the subcontractor will also 
send us an invoice, uh, which uh, we want to attach to the according um, contact. So let's go there. Okay. So we can go to the purchase. Let's go back to our purchase orders, ready mat, and open the according supplier from here. Um, so this is also linked with our ITS Easy Docs, as you can see, but you do not need to switch to the browser or something like this. You can just open the drop zone from here and see the full document library of the according site. So from there, you can just take your invoice and drag and drop it to the according site. And there you can see now the document is uploaded. Sorry. And you can also see a preview of the uploaded document. Okay, cool. So don't need to put uh, any kind of work into the document management system because it's accessible by the it is easy business solution. Right. And this is only example. So uh, the integration of uploading documents or this drop zone is on different uh, models. So it's on contacts, it's on fleet management, it's on projects, it's on products, and we can configure it on nearly every model. Okay. Nice. Good. So let's take a look where we at. Well, we, I think we need to deliver the, the stuff that we have produced now to our very seller, right? So yeah, that's she... already done. So we delivered and after the delivery, we all uh, invoiced. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to receive the furnitures in great trade again. And once they are received, we want to book the appointment for the mounting services there. And then we can upgrade or update the project tasks and in the next step, uh, order the network from high fiber. A couple of jobs for, for Mary Seller uh, <laughs> uh, and to, to, to get ready with that. But it's uh, according to her internal project management that she now got the next step, which is, as you say, uh, she's going to order that as a work item from her supplier that there's going to be an appointment where she is going to be doing then the setup uh, and uh, setup is going to be the mounting of the of the office stuff in her new office um, so this is can, it can be done of course by a phone call but how about if that would be done more seamlessly over the web uh, with a web-based appointment tool is that what we are going to use here? Right. So let's receive the goods in the first step. So here we can click on validate to receive the furniture. And then we can use the website to create appointment. So here we are on the website of Fresh Furnishings, as you can see on the yellow uh, color. And let's go to the appointment section there. We are logged in as Mary Seller there and want to select the appointment for mounting services. And then we can select uh, available employees. So let's take Aaron Fisher here and view the availabilities. And here we have the mounting services from Aaron Fisher, team with four people for on-site mounting. And as you can see here in the calendar, there are some possible appointments available, as you can see. And we can choose the one we want. And then we can already confirm this using the website. As you can see here, there's an appointment charge of zero. 
um, because the service was already included in the sale order which was uh, created. So it's a free service in this case, but of course it can also be used for um, appointments where you want to charge the client. So that's also possible. Since this is free, we can confirm the booking here right away and we have the confirm confirmation there. Uh, if it's something we need to pay for, then it would start the checkout process, which is also used from the e-commerce web shop from the solution. So let's take a look into the appointments from the backend. So here again, we are logged in as John now. And when we take a look at the appointments here, you can also see a dashboard with uh, pending appointments, approved appointments already. And here we have one new appointment. So let's look into that. So one appointment for 21st of October, eight to 12. And customer great trade. So this is exactly what we just saw there. So let's approve this one that the mounting can take place on the coding date. So as you can see here, you can create invoices from the appointments, of course. So if there is a chargeable service, then this can be done easily from here. Okay, back on great trade. Let's update the project once. So we did some additional work here, as you can see. So plan mounting in new location. This was done. So let's update the task. Add some timesheets here. And okay, great. So let's go back to the task. We can also now switch the state. Great. So, next thing we can do here is check network function is still blocked since there is no network yet but what is already in design state is review offerings network and confirm contract so let's open this one and also edit we can also add a line here so this was done now and we ordered the new network by phone. And the contract will be sent from high fiber. So let's save and update some more. Well, you can also see the change status here. So as you can see, the progress on the according task is updated as well. So let's take a look at the use case again to see where we are. So next thing we're going to have is the use case four. So we are creating a sales contract for the network now using high fiber company. And there we want also to show how a supplier contract can be created and also a short overview about existing uh, finance reports. So for, for this, we are switching to the company from Mike Consult and there we are going to go uh, create the sale contract first. Here you can see the overview already. So this is also something which is not by default there. Uh, you can see the income from customer contracts uh, and also if there are contracts expiring, for example, or uh, there you have the possibility to communicate with the client, um, ask them for renewal 
and take according actions. You will also be notified about those contracts. But for now, let's create a new sales contract first. Customer is great trade. Um, contract is checked since we already used the according action. So the contract module is completely new module, right? That uh, is really inherited here. Yes, this is uh, completely new from from scratch. So there is uh, uh, full functionality for sales contracts um, with according recurring invoices, with uh, renewals, with upsell and downsell, with uh, supplier contracts based on sale order categories, or also, uh, of course, um, created manually. We will see that. Um, but this is a full own and new module we are showing here. So first we're going to set up the contract information here. So let's start the new contract on 1st of November. It will be invoiced on a monthly basis and we can set, for example, 24 month. The renewal duration will be 12 months. This means once the notice period is over and the contract cannot be canceled anymore by the client it will auto renew the contract according to the 12 months now end date is calculated accordingly and the preset uh, start date we will set for today because maybe we are already taking some actions before the start of the contract and if there is something we also want to invoice to the client, we can do this by using the past invoice policy. Um, in this case, single invoice. So if there is something, we would invoice that separately in one invoice. So first I now created the contract information. And since I did that, now I can create the products and based on the setup of the product here for example month this is a recurring product it's already considering the contract information just given in the default tab and we have also the possibility to change all those values on each and every contract line for now we will stay with this so we have a network connection there then we will also add some repeaters. This is a one-time fee, let's say five. Save and close. Then let's add a router for rent. And for rent, this means we are going to invoice per month. You can see the unit price accordingly. And what we do now is we are going to set the sales price category. Uh, using that, we can also define that a purchase contract is created. So let's take a look into that. For this router, we can specify on category or products uh, what should happen. So in this case, we want to create a purchase contract. We're going to sell this product on a fixed price for 15 euro on a monthly basis. But we could also set up already what we want to have in our supplier contract. So here we are going to create a contract with Cisco systems. And this time we are also using a monthly purchase for five euro. So setting this up, it will create us a purchase contract automatically once this contract is confirmed. Last not least, we're going to Add a setup fee, one-time fee here as well, and save this. And what we can see here now, we have one recurring amount and we have one-time amounts here. So the amounts are already splitted so that everyone knows, okay, what is maybe only included in the first invoice and what's the recurring amount which will be billed per month. What we also can do here is, for example, use the text block module. This is not related to contracts module. This is available on all other models too, like using 
a text block here, for example, like greeting of contract. As you can see here, the name is added. And when we look into this, there's a possibility to use placeholders. So we have the right term and the right number for each and every contact there. So let's save it. Let's select it again. And as you can see now, since we have a sale order number, it's also updating the number there. And this is all the client wants. So let's confirm the contract. Now what you can see is there's a couple of new options there. The delivery is created, of course, for the goods we need to ship to the client, but there's also invoice created already. And that we can also see here. Currently there's only one invoice, but based on the interval, it will be created a monthly invoice. So that you can see all invoices related to the contract then in this tab. And we can also open it from here. Like here you can see what we already can invoice to the client. So there are the one-time fees included as well as the recurring ones. So we can validate also from here. Of course, in the next invoice for the next month then, for example, there will be only the recurring fees again. We can show the invoices of course also from here. So when we go to the accounting area, you can see we have the open invoices here as well. In general, the accounting section, just a short information, has a couple of enhancements like a DATEV integration for import exporting DATEV, uh, the payment follow-up, you can configure follow-up levels for uh, due payments and follow-up accordingly. There are reports uh, for tax reports, of course, as well as uh, intrastat reports are the yeah general things we need to have in a German uh, finance, uh, financial tool. Well, so that's basically the, the functionality from the sale uh, contract, there's even more, but what we also talked about is the purchase contract. So here you can see the dashboard like we saw before and what's new here, there's a new draft contract created. So let's look into this and here is Cisco Systems, which we used as in the sale uh, price category. And here is the Cisco router for rent included with the five euro as we set it up there. And in the contact information, you can see it's taking all the values from the sales contract. Of course, you can also define new values here, but for now this is fine. So we can confirm the contract from here as well. So let's go back to our sales contract one more time. Uh, because now we should add something since Great Trade wants also to have some additional zip accounts and therefore we can use the upsell functionality. So you can upsell existing contracts. Uh, of course, you can also downgrade. You can select the upgrade or upsell date and add the according lines here. So let's add some zip accounts, say 10. And upsell current contract. So here, as you can see, the zip account was added to the contract lines. And this service will be included in the invoice matching the upsell date. 
You can also see your upsell history here, what we did. So 1st of November is the upsell, upsell reason, and when it was created. So you have always a full track of the changes in the contract. And what we also saw here, there are, for example, additional functionalities like uh, showing the earnings of the contracts based on contract lines, as well as the full contract there. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so this was the contract section. So let's take a look at the use cases again. Back to Mary. So she, she has a lot of work today. Um, so yeah, update the project according to progress, create management overview, and then create a support ticket for the network issue. Okay, that's interesting. Let's switch to her environment and take a look at the tasks but yeah this is for example what we wanted to have there so review offerings of network so let's edit that will be fine yeah okay already did that that's right so let's set it to done okay and now we can also put this one in the near future. But first, we want to create a new overview. So there we have a new management overview available. And there we want to create additional chart to have a better overview about um, invoice amounts based on salesperson. So let's create an area chart for this. This is something where you can configure everything based on available modules or models in the system. So here, let's take the invoices as area chart, and then let's group by salesperson and let's take the untaxed amount and as you can see in the preview already this is how it would appear you could apply also some additional filters and you can also show the unit okay so euro that's fine so let's save this one and it's published so let's go to the management overview and now we have our new values available so let's go back sorry let's go back to the sheet and here are the invoice amounts per sale order shown now wow that's quick that's the dashboard for every manager on a day-to-day -day basis right correct that's usable for everyone uh, it's also based on the permission you want to grant so of course you can also um, assign according um, user and it's also related to the permissions so if there is no permission for the according values the user won't see it of course um, but that's a real great feature uh, because yeah, it gives you a short, uh, quick overview. And of course, it's always updating according to the values. Right. So what we do, uh, wanted to do is to create a um, support ticket next because uh, we are facing some issues with our new network. So we want to put a service request therefore we are using the website so here we are logged into the to our with our account to the website of high fiber which you can see on the color so let's go to the support section 
and let's create a new ticket. Nice. So add. in in the business system that you are going to have the support and the ticketing can be done over the web page. Yeah, right. Um, it can be done using uh, login. It can also be done by um, anonymous accounts that you that's something you can specify. Of course, we recommend to assign a coding user for it because uh, then the data is. Uh, set accordingly to this user which we can see now so let's first create this ticket so ticket 003 was created and to see what happened there we are going to change the browser to my consult and switch to the support module also here you can see a dashboard uh, where you have an overview about the support tickets as well as support uh, teams or support levels so you can set up different levels and you also can see how much uh, you spent on the tickets as well as what happens to the tickets so here's a new ticket 003 issue with network that was what we just created so let's edit this one and assign someone to the ticket so let's assign it to my consult but you can also assign some more colleagues to this ticket and that's also a good feature because normally there's only one user to assign here you can assign multiple users according to your needs you can also assign a project for example it's a if it is related to a uh, sale order or if you have a support project for the coding customer um, that's also a helpful feature there you can also use tags like network in this case to um, do some analysis on the things where issues occur and we can also use the timesheets here and the timesheets can be filled from the according project and task it can be filled from the timesheets app itself but it can also be filled from the support ticket as we can do here right now so let's add animal analysis remote 30 minutes and save it so status change to assigned and values are stored here and let's set the status now to work in progress which we can also see here in the chatter okay so we have updated the record here and what we also have as a possibility is to start working so we can start the time tracker as you can see here now the buttons change to pause or stop warning and the time tracker will record the real time as you can see here and once you start uh, the time tracker you can add uh, things you did during this time which will be uh, used for the timesheet entry then what we also want to take a look at now is what's from the customer side here we created the ticket on the website with Mary Seller. And there we are going to look into her account now. As you can see here, you have a quotation, sale orders, of course, and also tickets. And when we open the according ticket issue with network, you can see now what we updated there assigned to my consult stage work in progress and we can already see the created time sheet entry and description what was done on the ticket so far there's also the possibility to download the ticket information with the according time spent so the customer is always up to date what's happening to the ticket all right 
Okay, so let's jump back to the use cases and see where we're at. So we are use case seven now, which is the final use case from the story. Uh, here we want to show, um, yeah, my account on the ticket. That's what we already saw. Now we can show the attendance again and the overtime count there because we did uh, some adjustments in this area or not to say a lot. And there's also enhanced leave. Uh, for example, you can create overtime leave and that's what we're going to do there. So let's go back to here. So as you can see here, we are still checked in. And on the screen, we can already see the overtime hours. So we have 27 hours at the moment. Planned hours for current month is based on the work time model and also what was worked up till now. And there are also additional information available which can be set on the work model or on the according employee itself, like minimum working time, maximum working time. We can set uh, the maximum overtime per day and also total overtime. So you can define what you want to do with the overtime. So let's first start this one. Uh, let's start. It's not within the uh, defined time when the workday should be over. So there's it's required to select a, a reason for this. This can be a business trip or something like this. Uh, let's say she felt sick due to the big amount of work she had today. <laughs> and then we can go for the employees, for example. So let's take a look at uh, Mary here. And yeah, there is a work time configuration, which is related to the attendance. And here you can define a lot of values like ask for the signing reason, which is here configured globally. Uh, you can also define it on the user if you do not want to have it for all customers. Then we can see the values like minimum, maximum uh, values we just saw on the login or screen. You can also define expiration of overtimes, for example, up to uh, a specific date. So let's say, for example, 90 days after creation, it uh, expires and so on. So there are a lot of things you can do. And there are also some additional stuff in the leaf, uh, which is shown here. So we have the current leaves based for the, or for the current year. And we also have next year leave. So um, there is a scheduler which is calculating the next year leave always based on the current uh, contract of the user. And then you can also plan leave for the upcoming year, which is yeah, a common scenario that in end of the year already next year leave is planned. This is possible with this enhancement here. But in this case, now we have 31 overtime hours. So let's go to the leave app and create some leave for tomorrow. Again, she felt sick. So she takes yeah overtime leave because she has so much. You can select half day, of course, or custom hours, but based on her work time model, the day has 7.6 hours. So let's take it that save it and let's approve it and as you can see here the overtime hour is updated accordingly so from the 31 there are only now 24 remaining so well, it's all included right then the time sheet and also time tracking uh, is included Right, that, everything is included in one work model, and the work model may be also a shift work model where you have various shifts uh, that can be planned throughout the production environment. Correct, um, that's also possible. We have uh, the shift planning uh, included for several modules, uh, it can also be used uh, for the, the projects, not only for manufacturing. 
and this will uh, also reflect here it's all based on um, yeah attendance so as you can see here for the older time leave uh, and for regular leave there are also attendances created and also for the overtime uh, there is there are journal entries created so you can um, see and report when which overtime was created when which overtime was re reduced so that's um, yeah reflects in in several models a real work time um, bookkeeping right yeah right uh, because it also uh, includes the um the reports uh, we can take a short short view there so you can create uh, attendance pdf sheets uh, which is having all the work time hours for the employee based on dates uh, you can create that uh, for all the custom uh, for all the employees or for single employees and uh, store those uh, pdf files uh, or also um, excel then you have uh, also the reporting done which is also required for example in germany excellent great so that's the short short really short uh, showcase um that's over now uh and the next section from our presentation would be the technology all right, yeah, technology. That's always a big question about what kind of technology is behind the scene. Um, yeah, the basic idea is that those products are going to be embraced together in one common denominator. And that common denominator is the control center. Uh, the this control center is giving you the ability to upload modules, for instance, if you have new ones. You can also see the service, uh, that, whether it's running or not. This is all about the tech stuff that is running behind the scenes usually, and it's not, not necessary that every user needs to attach to that. But on the other hand, if you need to attach to that, you rather do that quick and easy, and that is the whole idea about this suite of products, to do it uh, all in one place and to do it quick and easy. So while Alfred is uh, still going to do some uh, browser switching, he is uh, actually going to log into the this control center now. And uh, there we see uh, it live. Uh, the, this control center is having all the suite products included. Uh, you see it is easy business, it is easy docs, it is easy email and so forth. So when you click on those, you are going to see what, what kind of actions you have. And there's also an explanation about what it is. This is not part of each of the products, but it's a separate server product, which is actually lying around the parts and can really control those products if they need to. You see the business up module uploader where you can upload your modules if you like to, uh, if you need to. Uh, you can also see the service status. Uh, it tells you whether the service is up and running or when it's not running or when you need to restart because of the new module that you have just put up. Uh, you can restart it from here. There's a possibility to list modules, but then there's also the possibility to make a backup of the database. Well, there's a couple of discussions about that, why you should use that one instead of the built-in database backup functionality of Odoo. But uh, it is actually not very clever of using the Odoo one because it's actually making a security hole, a big security hole into your security. Therefore, we have put it up onto a separate region. It's also managed better than uh, the, the regular backup section that you are used to. And it's also having the ability to make even a template from one of the backups, which means that you can create a new database from within that backup instantaneously. And uh, it's also put up on a separate space. Uh, well, a couple of advantages actually, they come from experience, as I said before. Log viewer is just telling you about the log of what is happening. And then there's a settings section, which is a big section, which is actually giving you, if you need to, the ability to modify the settings for the it is easy business solution. 
Uh, the other ones are pretty much alike. Uh, they are, of course, dependent on each part. There's not so many uh, settings that you, uh, well, settings is actually even larger on it is easy docs, but there's not so many uh, entries here for it is easy docs, but then the settings section is having a lot of benefits uh, compared to what you usually need to do. And easy mail and uh, also easy team are likewise steered from within here. But the most important thing about the whole kind of control center feature is the user management, because there you can really address the need for a common user interface, saying what is uh, the ability of each user. If you, for instance, see the directory of the users, you are going to find out uh, what you could do with the users. And uh, actually, if you would click on uh, the list of users, you are going to see what users we have currently have set up and uh, how they actually work. And you can also add new users from the directory. You can also see what kind of groups the users is, and that is actually giving him also the permissions for, for various uh, products and how that is going to be done. So uh, there is a new user that we have just set up, and uh, this new user is now able to sign in because we just have set it up, right? No, he's not. No, uh, no, no, it's not set it up yet. So that's what I wanted to show here at the moment. So. Okay, so Gerald is not yet able to log in. Uh, and that's not because of his password, which he might have forgotten, but he's not yet in the, in the group. So no, he's not here yet. Exactly. So he needs to be set up now. And this is uh, what we are going to give him, the ability to use docs and business and uh, add, it, uh, add that user in the directory. And uh, with that, uh, we are then able to log on, right? Should. So let's try again. Um... Remember the password. <laughs> oh, let's see. Ah, yeah, okay, he's in. He is in, he is on. Okay, that's, that's good. Uh, so you see from, from one, one only one only uh, control center you can really control all of those solutions he is now able also to log into it is easy business and uh, with that he is really uh, on his way uh, and that gives a lot of benefits to the administration of those solutions uh, and, and that is the idea behind the control center There's other nitty gritty things uh, which you can do. The this control center itself can be controlled, and uh, you also can modify the control center as such uh, with the settings and, and those kind of things. But in a nutshell, it's really the technology behind, uh, as well as the ability to manage uh, all together. And I think that's really important with such a suite of products. Other than that, uh, there's, uh, then of course, the environment. Uh, we are providing several hosting locations throughout Germany. Uh, they are all located in Bavaria. They are connected via fiber and copper, and they are also having a lot of redundancy. And it can be set up permanently for you. Uh, it's a private environment, so to say, uh, which is giving you the ability to really have your machine uh, running in your place. And uh, this is actually then also better than if you have a server running elsewhere in the world, not maybe complying with certain data or data regulations uh, in terms of security and auditing. And uh, therefore, well, it is a good idea if the stuff is running there. It's an ability to, to run the software there. There's also a lot of automation and therefore the setup of the solutions is going really quick. All right, yeah, that was basically what we wanted to show you today. It's not, not everything that is in place. I think we have just counted about 75 modules which are going into this distribution of It Is Easy Business. And then there's also that lot of modification for It Is Easy Docs and some of these uh, modifications also for the other parts. So there's quite some advances uh, that we have put into those parts. And, what we also are taking care of is that they are working seamlessly together. That means that we are having the, this control center on the one hand side and also that we check out that this is really up and running and working uh, instead of having a kind of a, a kaleidoscope and mosaic of, of solutions which might not be running. 
thanks everybody to attend and uh, for the uh, for the attention that you brought in. Again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to address them later on. And uh, have a great evening. I'm looking forward to talk to you soon. Then, bye bye.